Hello there. Hi, I am Jo Borbintrop and this is the Amijo Show. This is the New Norm series and uh, this is episode four. Um, I'm very, very thrilled to introduce you to um, someone who deals with a very serious topic. Um, but I know his company have a lot of fun doing it and they're very passionate about what they do because I spent all day with Stuart's company recently on a photo shoot because Stuart's one of my clients. So Stuart Ritchie of Ritchie Phillips Accountants welcomes the Mijo Show. Thank you very much, Joe. Thanks, thanks for coming on. And um, yeah, so we, we were recently doing at this uh, great photo shoot, weren't we, just before this new set levels of lockdown. Um, but uh, I want to sort of ask you some really beefy questions about what people can do right now with their money, with their business. Um, so many of my tribe and my, my audience are small business owners. Uh, some of them are absolutely thriving. Some of them are having to completely change tack and do something very different. Um, but then others are, are sort of doing okay in between. So it's probably aimed at the people that are doing okay or the ones that are having a real kind of, what on earth do I do now? What, what, how do I cope with this? How do I manage my money? Um, what, what are the best things to do right now? So let's start with them um, and their entrepreneur, real kind of businesses. Because that is part of what who you who you serve, isn't it, within your business, within your accounting system. So, um, so what would you uh, recommend to people that are struggling right now, or, or what, or worried really, actually, what what the future looks like for them right now? Well, I think there's um, a universal truth about being involved in any entrepreneurial business, is that it's it really is quite a lonely world out there. Uh, if I can sort of pick a topic. Um, sort of heading. Mm. It's quite rare to find um, individuals who are entrepreneurs who have a great support network around them um, and who also have what I'd call good emotional cognizance. It sort of manifests itself in three, three sort of different ways, but each of which are, are quite concerning if left unchecked. So the first one quite often you see is disconnect with uh, family. You, you quite often hear people talk about their family do not understand why you're so committed to your business. Mm. And it's, it's usually a reflection of their perception that you spend no time with them. They look at other families and see um, husband and wife or partners spending time with each other or spending time with children or being able to go away on holiday together um, and leave their work behind. But when you're running your own business, it's terribly difficult to leave your work behind. The business almost acquires the, the characteristic of another child that it, and a young child at that that always follows you around. I think that's so true. So I, one of my, um, my statements is, is your business a, a baby or a beast? So is it, is it dominating you and you're scared of it or are you scared to put it down? So yes, yeah, same analogy, isn't it? I think that's ridiculous. Well, let's, let's just hope it's not both. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think the, the answer is to, the, to that is that I think you have to segregate your time during the course of a week and at the weekends. So that you're quite clear about what is your priority. So for example, I, when I was training as a chartered accountant, my uh, training partner once described to me how he allocated his weekends. And he basically said, every weekend has got six parts. And uh, two parts are for me, two parts are for my wife, and the other two parts are for my children. Now I leave you to judge the merits of that. Um, but it seemed to work quite well for him. Um, you just have to bear in mind that the, the, the chap was a complete workaholic and thought nothing of working from sort of eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night, five days a week, unless there was a better offer like going to the opera or going out to supper with friends. Um, but that, that was essentially his, his regime. And it, it actually meant that, and for him having two parts of the weekend, it, it, for him it was, I'm going to go and play golf, or I'm going to go and play tennis, or I'm going to go and exercise. 
but for his wife it meant um, if you want to go shopping if, to use a stereotype um, we're going shopping and we're going shopping together and I'll give you my undivided attention and of course family time with the children very much depended on their age you know were, were they just starting out playing football in the park or was it sports day at school um, or were they playing a match either at school or away from school and he would make a point of being there for them and only them and I thought that was quite a good way of um, ad addressing the issue because the alternative is if, if you're not careful the whole thing consumes you mm. and then you find yourself totally dis detached from arguably what what is more important yeah and that can happen really quickly I think when you're passionate about your business you can easily go down that that uh, deep well and feel suddenly lonely and being disconnected from your family. Mm. Yeah, that's really true. Second, second one I would sort of throw in under this um, heading is it, it's not uncommon to see somebody who's an entrepreneur who thinks only them can get the job done because nobody else is as good as you. And as a consequence, you don't delegate. And as a consequence of not delegating, you don't have the time to uh, think about yourself, your family, your business. And I also think what it does for the people who work with you is it, it makes their roles less meaningful. And it means that they themselves don't develop as fast or as well as they might do so. Now, I founded my accountancy firm, Richie Phillips, some 17 years ago. And in a, a lovely twist, the lady who is my secretary when I first started out has rejoined my firm and she says of the early days when we worked together you have to bear in mind she joined in the first three months of starting the firm she she said there was of me she, there was nothing that I'd let happen unless I'd seen it myself and she says of me today um she's quite pleasantly surprised at how little involved I get in certain matters and I've gone from being at the start a team of myself and two part-timers um, and as of next month we'll be a team of 10 and most of the growth has come in the last two to three years yeah that's brilliant and a large part of it is I now don't get involved in quite a lot of things and by creating the space for the team to actually run some of the client relationships and some of the work. Uh, we, we get so much more done and I have individuals around me who are so much more able. Yeah, and that's key, isn't it? To admit, actually someone might be better at doing this than you <laughs> and, yes. and letting go of the reins, yeah. Um, so really those are the, the two key points I would say under entrepreneurs, it's a lonely world out there. There is, there is I suppose, a just one further point to make is that another way of addressing this is by actually having uh, a mentor or a consultant that you see on a periodic basis. It's not to say you need to check in with them on a weekly basis or monthly basis, but maybe every three months or every six months can work. And it just gives you a reality check because one of the things that concerns me, for example, about running my accountancy firm is I, I don't know what's happening in the accountancy market because I am not the accountancy market. I have a very specialized practice that focuses on private client tax work. But what happens is by being very good at that, we then get asked to do other things such as accounting and tax returns and, and cloud accounting and a full finance function. So by having a mentor or coach or a, a, a consultant, it gives you that reality check as to, are you behaving normally? And what's your reference point to the um, industry or profession in which you're working? Um, and I have to say, I, I can't encourage that enough because some of the very successful people I've seen uh, retain sometimes, you know, as many as two life coaches or business coaches uh, in their business just to help shape their ideas yeah yeah that's great advice I, you know i recommend a, a coach and a mentor because coaches and mentors do two different things um and obviously we met you became my client because of your coach 
who um, who I worked with, and then you saw um, that reference point, didn't you? So, yeah, I think I think it's really important, and also it gives you a chance to check in with yourself. And it, you know, these are challenging times. Running a business is challenging at the best of times, let alone through these times. So, I think that's uh, that's where a mentor comes in really more so from the personal aspect, because actually, unless you're feeling stable and centered and able to to deal with it everything personally then you know things start to go wrong don't they if you're not you, know. you have the potential yes yeah definitely that's great thank you and so from an entrepreneur's point of view what would be your kind of advice and i know there are some government schemes that are available um so what would you what would be your best advice for someone right now and to deal with the times that we are looking at well, i think it there's, there's a very clear point here, which is um, cash is king. And it's in a sense, it's trite to say so because it has always been thus, but more so now where demand for products and services can be turned on and off at, at a switch depending on government policy. Like yourself, I'm based in the Southeast, so we're not seeing that so much. But when you listen to the, the stories of what's happening in the the Midlands and north of England, uh, you, you can see some businesses just find themselves stopping everything within 24, 48 hours notice. And so cash is king is, is a truism that has always been thus, but is particularly so now. Because I think it, it's absolutely fair to say that if you run out of cash, you're probably going out of business and going out of business really fast. Um, running out of cash is also a very good way to destroy the valuation of your business. Mm -hmm. If you can't trade, you can't make money, you can't demonstrate sustainable earnings. And it's, just, it's always sustainable earnings that create value for acquirers of businesses. So I can't emphasize um, enough the necessity to, to keep cash. Um, you mentioned yourself, um, government support schemes or loan schemes, and we'll, we'll come back to those in a moment. But I just thought there are two other points I just wanted to make relating to cash. And you, you referred to um, uh, a coach, a gentleman we both know called Andrew Priestley. And he's uh, written a book originally called The Money Chimp, but recently renamed um, Manage and Grow Your Money. Um, easily available on Amazon. It's not going to break the bank. Um, because it doesn't break the bank, I quite often give copies of the books to younger professionals I meet, mm -hmm. saying, I'm not making any judgment whatsoever in relation to your um, finances, but you know what? This might be quite a good read. Mm -hmm. And it just gets the right train of thought around matching your outgoings to your income. And if you then apply that within the context of business, I, th I think it then provides for a sustainable future. Yeah, I agree. It's got some great advice for everyone right now um, yeah. in it, just to be really mindful of how much you're spending, especially come up to Christmas. It's a time to, you know, that people think, oh, well, you know, it won't hurt. But actually, it might be the Christmas that you actually have to say, well, we're going to we're going to really rein it in this Christmas and just value what what the important stuff is in life and yeah. cut down on the shopping. Now, there's a second point to be really made about cash is king, and that is in your business now, more so than ever, you really need to get some proper accounting. You don't just need a bookkeeper. You need a proper bookkeeper and some proper accounting to go hand in hand so that you've got accurate financials either every month or every quarter. Financials that not only tell you how much profit you've been making, but how much cash you've got. And also, what are your future liabilities? It, liabilities could be as simply as saying, um, you've got loan repayments to make, but other liabilities that tend to be very lumpy are tax liabilities. So having clear visibility about how much tax you owe months ahead of the event will help hugely. And I, I take the view there really isn't an excuse now to not have a proper bookkeeping and accounting in place. Just about every entrepreneur would have heard about cloud accounting. 
And it's quite easy to think that, oh yes, I can get one of these products and use it myself. But what the products do is actually give you that opportunity to leverage up and have what I would call a full finance function. So you not only maintain your books, but you actually get some real information out of your books. And then if you partner your cloud accounting with some of the applications that, that are available, you can start to get some automation into your accounting function. So things like um, machine learning and artificial intelligence can get all of your purchase data into your system um, without the need to rekey um, data. So transactions that were the same last month can be processed the same this month without human interaction. But there are other interesting apps being developed for cloud accounting, such as debt collection applications, where you set the parameters and the rules. And if you've got unpaid invoices, you can automate um, the chasing of those invoices. Um, and sometimes chasing invoices works as an automated process. Sometimes it doesn't, and you have to revert to human interaction, but it does go some way to assist in, in keeping the accounting um, function under control. Yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. And uh, I know you actually offer a very good cloud accounting service, don't you? Yes, well, we've created a second division in our business called My Accountancy HQ. Uh, it's led by um, a young lady, Kelly. Um, Kelly is um, working towards her chartered certified accountancy exams and has gained um, considerable experience over the last decade, um, but also has quite an interest in how technology works. And uh, as you know, Joe, I'm in the process of buying a business on behalf of one of my clients, which um, we, we're in the process of um, going to take over running as, as the board of directors but Kelly's going to take over the finance function. So she will have a, uh, a million pound business that she will be running um, from this office, um, which will be paperless and will be producing mon monthly financials so we can understand how we're progressing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all out there, isn't it now? So it's a very powerful way of um, just keeping things straightforward and, and easily accessible. I think that's the thing that, you know, I don't have a very big business, it is just me at the moment. But um, I think it's keeping the accessibility and the ability to, to forecast and see where things aren't going right, isn't it? Very quickly without having to spend hours trawling through all the, all the, the files and the, you know, the, the, the difficulties we used to do like, to look at the account. Oh, it's the bat phone. <laughs> It's not, not a wine delivery coming in, is it, Stuart? I know you like your you like your, your, a bit of a bit of a wine connoisseur, aren't you? <laughs> well, you say that, but of course your reference is to our photo shoot a few weeks back, where the video was shot in the cellar of an extremely nice country house hotel. It was indeed, but you do know a fair bit about wine. I mean, I you know that's a good investment for me right now, to be honest, is a, a glass of uh, a box of wine from the wine company that I invest in. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, brilliant that's all really great advice uh, you know I'm, I'm, I've had many conversations with you in our time I said about I'm clocking lots of new things as well so um, yeah and uh, thank you so much for coming on the show um, is there are there any last sort of you know real nuggets takeaways for anyone at the moment with their finances and accounting or anything you'd like to I think the, the key thing to note is that the, the government introduced some uh, loan schemes the first one best known as the bounce back loan scheme and the other one known as the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme. Uh, I think the key point there is that uh, applications, are, my recollection is applica all applications have to be in by the 30th of November. And whilst there are some new entrants to the market for um, what we call C bills, uh, bounce back loans, I think are typically for uh, to be used for your existing business. Um, bounce back loans have a, a limit of uh, the amount you can borrow is up to 50,000 and it's predicated on your turnover. So if your turnover is 60,000, you can borrow 15. If your turnover is um, half a million, you can borrow the 50. So 
bounce back loans are terribly easy to get and it's it's usually just off um, your bank's website where you complete some details make a self-certification um, and and my experience is they tend to come through within two three four days um, c bills are on another scale so they're intended for much larger businesses uh, the, the key point i would suggest is that loans up to 250,000 uh, can be secured uh, without the necessity to give a personal guarantee as the business owner. But I think there's, um, again, another a truth about borrowing money is that the best time to borrow money is when you don't need it. And what I'm finding with a number of my clients is that either they've taken bounce back loans or C bills, and they've just put the loan proceeds into a savings account because they're not entirely certain what the future holds. Yep. And by having the loan when they don't need it, they've got the cash for when they will need it or might need it. And if it transpires that they don't need it at all, they can pay off the loan early. The prepayment of um, the loan is very much welcomed by the banks um, because the treasury will be very pleased to see the amount of government back loans reduce. So I would give consideration that if you're running a business and you're, you're concerned as to what your cash flow is or might be, or you're running a business because you're um, thinking of seriously growing over the next three, four, five years, I would give some consideration to taking a government back loan now so that you've got the, the cash in place to grow your business. What I would say is also say is don't take the loan if you intend to use it for yourself, because that's not what the purpose is. And Only take it if you're going slippery. to put it into growing your business. Yeah, and, and you go down a slippery slope then, don't you? If, you? if you're taking it as a desperation method, it's be much better to approach your bank and say, look, um, you know, a lot of the banks are being supportive um, and being more considerate for struggling individuals, let alone businesses, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Excellent advice. Thank you, Stuart. Um, this is Stuart Ritchie from Ritchie Phillips. And if you'd like to know more about their amazing company, um, they are a, an incredible team of people. I know all of them now from that photo shoot, which was a real experience. And uh, yeah, I must get back there for some some lunch or something, actually. It was all work, work, work that day, wasn't it? But very It hard. was, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, but the, the product, um, which, which is going to be the relaunch of the website for Richie Phillips, will come about, I think, in the next fortnight, where we've created some super imagery um, around the messaging on, on the website, but also some super imagery for the team members. Um, and for the first time in my working career, um, a video to uh, explain what we actually do for our clients. Yeah, it's fun. You know, it was, it was a, the end of a, a journey, you and I working together, wasn't it? But I think it was, um, I'm looking forward to seeing all of that because uh, it, was, it looked great on the day. From the other side of the, the camera, it looked very good. So, um, yeah, it was a real pleasure to work with you guys. I hope you uh, you enjoyed your experience too. We, we certainly did. So thank you ever so much. Oh, no pleasure. It's great to see you evolve and come into this new era of Richie Phillips. So if you'd like to find out more about Stuart's company, richiephillips.co.uk is where you'll find Stuart and all his amazing team who are uh, just, yeah, fantastic people who have not only thrived through, the, through this time, but also have grown. So really excited for you, Stuart. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining today. Okay, and please, if you're listening on Audible, then obviously uh, subscribe to my station on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and uh, get in touch if you'd like to find out more from me. Okay, I'm Joe Baldwin Trot, that's the Media Show. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye.